What's good? I'm a Ruthless Addict. It's your girl, Tiffany Shawn. Thank you all so much for tuning in to All Things Ruthless, home of the Ruthless Addicts. And it is time for Roll Call. It's about to go down at Club Eden. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready for this week's weekly recap? We've got Madam, Blue, Tommy, Addiction, Doc, Babyface, Midnight, Fuego, Big D, Rashad, Trouble are all getting into some trouble and concierge is not playing. Are you guys ready? Let's go. Let's go down to the eating. Season 3, Episode 2, Daddy's Girl. And the synopsis reads as follows. Trouble goes to great length to prove her loyalty to Madam. Madam receives unfiltered advice from her father after one of her temper tantrums lands her in hot water. Now we know one of those temper tantrums is her and concierge. However, concierge is nowhere to be found at this moment. With that being said, you guys, we dive into first thing in the morning after madam has awake and she comes out and tommy says madam you have to eat and madam is like no i don't want to eat like a big ass excuse me y'all like a big old baby no i don't want to eat and you know and i'm waiting for the my attorney mr love it and so she he says well i'll keep it warm for you and you can eat after you're done with talking with the attorney so she goes in and talks to attorney Mike Lovett and lets him know, I need your help. No, not with the drive-by from last week. I got something else. I got uh, two men that were locked up and I need them out today. And so he says, okay, but you, you're going to have to calm down. You're going to have to keep yourself out of trouble. You're messing with concierge and this is not a good look right now. You need to lay low as much as possible because i'm sure the judge is tired of seeing me about your people so then um he leaves mike lovett leaves and and joey y'all joey and tommy are hilarious um but joey tells tommy look I, I i'll take breakfast too so now at this point madam is feeling a little bit better about the situation and she says i and she, you know, she goes in to eat her breakfast. But uh, Joey tells Tommy, uh, I'll have breakfast too. What what, what did, would you make? I'll have breakfast too. So Tommy, y'all, this man comes out the pocket literally with a pocket muffin. And it says exactly that. How about this pocket muffin? Because in other words, I'm not cooking for you, bro. Step. So anyway, he gives them the muffin. He gives them the muffin and he walks away. So then we see the two attorneys. We see the district attorney as well as Mike Lovett, um, Madam's attorney. And he's telling the, they're talking to the judge and he's saying, look, she's, you know, arrested them without any proof. This has happened multiple times. So the judge gets on the district attorney's case and like, why is it that every time, you know, you, you're trying to lock these people up, you've locked them up multiple times. And you never come with any proof. Stop. You know, basically, so he's on her, on her hard, you know. And so she leaves. But then she talks to Davis and tells Davis, look, if you don't have anything clear and concrete, you can't keep getting these guys locked up. And I can't keep approving you locking these guys up. So uh, Davis tells her, look, I still got Fuego in custody. I still have him and the other three. So they're pressuring him. So he's probably ready to talk at this point. At this point. So then, you guys, then we see Madam. She has finally made her way to the club, and she talks to uh, she talks to Dime. She talks to 
she also talks to Blue. But Blue tells her, look, I have something to tell you. And she lets her know, uh, before you before you go and do anything else, I want you to give me Fernando. I want to have permission to take Fernando out because I, I was messing with his wife. I didn't know it was his wife. The same story that she told Tommy. And I want to take him out because he tried to take me out. She says, no, you can't have him. You can't take him out right now. Um, because it's, it's too hot. I'm wait, wait till I find out where concierge is. Then we can move a little differently. But she says, uh, blue says, so you can take out his wife Lotus, but I can't take out the brother. She's like, no, again, just wait until we see where concierge is. Cause I have no idea where this MF is on earth. So we need to be able to, we got to move smart. We can't just move just to be moving so then we see our guy fuego fuego has survived the wrath of the two eating bullies babyface and doc you guys yes my boy is alive thank you thank you thank you bt plus tyler perry whoever whoever made this call thank you y'all kept my boy alive so anyway we see that davis is there trying to convince fuego to tell on madam she says madam set this whole thing up and and you need to just tell on her tell what you know so we can lock her up she's one of the most ruthless notorious uh gangsters or gangster bosses out there and you need to recognize that if you don't do something about it she's gonna take you out next so davis is still trying to you know convince fuego to turn on madam but but fuego says those magic words I want my attorney. And so she says to Fuego, let me guess, your attorney is Mike Levitt. And he, he's like, yeah, that's my attorney. Um, so get her and he get him and let me go. So then she's like, well, basically I'm done with you anyway. You can go, you can leave. So technically she was really there to release him because she had no evidence, no proof, nothing, nothing that she really wanted in regards to, especially in regards to Madam. So then you guys, then we see Madam and she is at the hospital or the nursing home where her father is and her father you know, he's there supposedly battling dementia, but the nurse, now this nurse, there's just something else about her that stands out for me. Um, they put emphasis on her face for a reason. I can't pinpoint it right at this moment, but there is something else up to this particular nurse. So then we see Madam, she is, um, well, first, before we get to see Madam interact with her dad, we see the three stooges. Uh, now, Fuego's not a stooge, but anyway, we see Fuego. We also see this attorney, um, Mike Lovett, and we also see uh, Doc as well as Babyface. And they're all coming outside of the jail. And basically, this attorney says, y'all can go. Um, and Fuego, you can go too. Just come on a ride with me. I'll take y'all back to the club. And Fuego's like, no, nah, I'm not with it. These MFs tried to kill me. So no, I'm not riding with them. And he's like, if you wanted to be dead, you could be still killed out in these streets. So let's go. So Fuego is his, he's confused. He's still pissed that they tried to take him out. Um, but he's definitely not getting in the car with attorney Mike Lovett nor with Dumb and Dumber also known as Doc and Babyface so then you guys then we see Madam interact with his with her father we know that her father is pretending to have dementia he's well aware of what is going on but he's hiding out in this nursing home um so that the FBI don't lock him up which leads me to thinking that this particular nurse helps. So the father says that this nurse, you know what she does? She cleans me extra hard to see if I will get hard. And I'm like, wait, what? How sick is that? Now, is she doing this because she really wants the father and she knows who he really is? Or is she doing this because she's a part of 
some organization that's trying to see if he's in there faking and trying to take him out. So anyway, after the father tells Madam this story, he also tells her, I want you, I need you to calm down. So this is the second time Madam has been warned, you know, from somebody telling her who's actually looking out for her best interest that she needs to calm down. Um, Fuego, or not Fuego, but uh, Concierge and his team are too much to play around with. You've already taken out Lotus. Now her father is looking for you. Um, what you should do is deal with somebody in the governor's office. You know, we there's a governor. I know you can't reach him, but there's a governor who has a daughter who likes to party. You could get her, get to her, get to that governor through his daughter. So then he also tells her about this woman by the name of Griselda Blanco, who was responsible for attempting to kidnap JFK in the middle of the day in New York City. Now, he's basically just informing her and educating her and giving her tools on how to survive in this, uh, this game that she's trying to play hopefully maybe she'll take heed i don't know at the end of the day concierge is still on her case and sure enough the nurse comes up and takes the father um to his room or takes says that she's about to take him to his room to clean him up and madam is just looking at her like you know so we're gonna see if there ends up being more also to what madam does to this particular nurse for just being too extra with her father again i hope she listened to what he said he spit some game he spit some truth she definitely needs to calm down or her life which is already on the line is going to be worse so then we see fuego he has made his way to amp now i've been calling amp amp even as his stage name but his stage name is addiction so with that being said fuego makes his way to addiction in his apartment and, and tells him you know everything that has gone on with him and addiction is like look man i got my own stuff going on i can't even focus and then he starts talking a little bit about what the police said and he's like wait hold up so immediately he pats fuego down and 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 he's like man i'm not wired i'm, I'm clean i'm clean so he he tell he talks to him he's like look it's all good i understand what you're going through let's just go to the club let's go talk to madam and 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 see you know see what her take is on all of this on this whole situation so then we see that the club is open trouble is talking to um blue like she just committed like she just did the best thing in the world as if her and blue are supposed to be best friends right now but the funny part at the end of their interaction is that rashad tries to give blue a hug and walks away i rashad i wish he would have just walked away from this whole club scene i can see more him getting into a whole lot more trouble not just what he and trouble have already done so inside the club scene, inside the dressing room, we see my boy Big D all in red. And he's just walking out. He's like, look, it's too heated. It's too stuffy in here. It's too intense in here. I got to go. So he walks out because I guess nobody is really talking. Nobody is, you know, saying much. Everybody's just trying to, you know, prepare themselves for the night, especially after everything that they have gone through. So then we see Madam, Tommy, and blue and they're just you know having that general conversation about what needs to be done and how or how things are going to be handled so then we see the fellas fuego and amp walk into the dressing room and they're looking at um fuego like what's he doing here matter of fact they're saying what's he even doing here and and amp's like well he's gonna go see madam and so then you know, again, the fellas, they just tried to kill this man. So he ain't really too happy to be there anyway. But then Madam walks into the dressing room and she talks to Fuego and she lets him know this has been done before. Um, we They have your fingerprint. At the end of the day, she's low-key threatening him. And in actuality, honestly, y'all, 
there's nothing Frego can do. I was hoping he would have tried to leave the city, but instead he went back as they always do. He went back to the club. And they, he, you know, as after Madam is done talking to him, you know, they say, he says to the fellas, like, oh, so uh, am I in some kind of gang now? Like, Fuego is like super green. He literally was only there to make his money so that he can work his way through uh, college so that he can get out of, literally just to do what he had to do to make the money to pay for college. And now this man is entrapped in all of of um madam's shenanigans that part i don't like i don't this is why i don't like madam because she got him mixed up in something that she could have just easily let him quit but nope she got him chopped and in a whole bunch of mess so the fellas kind of make a joke oh this little red dude he fought hard he didn't go out like no sucker like we couldn't take him out and she called madam called them weak for not even for not being able to even take fuego out but she just you know she just had to make her commentary but at the end of the day fuego does not still and probably would never trust these dudes even though they quote unquote has his back they let him know look we all got bodies and fuego is like what like he's just he's like so everybody knew all of this stuff except me and unfortunately yes fuego you everybody knew except you so then you guys then we see um, we see everybody amp goes his way because madam says I want to talk to you and You know come to my office and so we see now when I ask about this image in the mirror now We know that the individual that's in the mirror is fuego He has to get dressed and now go and dance on the stage as if nothing has ever happened as if he wasn't his life was not almost taken and as if he was not just in jail so then we make our way to madam's office with amp and madam and madam is basically just trying to apologize to amp and amp is like no nah, i'm good i'm good we good until we good you know but amp is high and um and drunk so he is so extremely nonchalant but madam is telling him look you need to keep it together you need it to get you need to get it together this is not gonna be you know this is not gonna be a good look for you he's like in other words, though, I'm good. There ain't no problem with me and you. And she tells him, look, I'm trying to have a civil conversation with you. Sit yourself down and let me talk. So in her version of I'm sorry, she's just saying, are you okay? Are you on pills? You know, just trying to act as if she's mad concerned about him. So then at the end of this conversation, we see Blue. Blue has made her way into Madam's office and lets her know what is going on and lets her know that she does not see Casanova in the club at the moment. So will they has has Casanova run? Has he took a, made a big escape route to get the heck out of Dodge? We don't know just yet, but we're absolutely looking forward to seeing the next episode of All the Queen's Men from season 3. Um, again, y'all, BT Plus was glitching, but I did my best to give you guys season three, episodes one and two. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like this content, please hit that subscribe button as well as notification bell so that you can receive reminders of ruthless content. And if you want to get some extremely exclusive content, make sure you join hit that join button to be a part of the exclusivity of all things ruthless okay all right you guys that's about it thank you so much for tapping in tuning in and you already know stay ruthless